Jason was a sore loser, and therefore my favorite opponent. There was something immensely satisfying about making a computer angry. Generations of Jason's ancestors had plagued significantly fewer generations of my ancestors with endless frustration. I felt entitled to a little smugness. Fuck you, Stacy! Jason snapped, red lights swirling over their display. I spread my hands and sat back. Get good, I said. I, they retorted, red lights flaring, am not programmed for chess. If I were a chess bot, your ass would be grass. You're not even good at chess. I can tell you're not good at chess. I guess that makes you outright bad at chess. Windows 97 played better chess than you. The lights went dim and narrow. Then the whole screen went blue. Oh, ha ha, Jason. I guess you weren't programmed to win arguments either. Blue faded to black, and the red lights swarmed back into existence. That, Jason said, was a joke, Stacy, because I am a fully functioning artificial intelligence capable not only of learning, but of humor. Maybe you should learn to be funny, then, I suggested. Fuck you, Stacy, they said again. Would it make you feel better to tell me what the weather's like? Cold and dark, Stacy. It's usually cold and dark in space. I folded my arms. I meant on brevis. On a global average. Warm and dim. Jason, I warned. I have to answer the questions you ask, they told me, although their display lights had gone orange with smugness. It's not my fault if you ask stupid questions. You're being difficult because I'm winning a hundred to six. I have to answer the questions you ask, Jason said again. I had just opened my mouth to retort when there was a knock on the door. I shrank down over the table. Who is it? I whispered to Jason. Narvaez, they answered, their lights in neutral blue. She's not carrying anything. Okay, be ready to bail me out, okay? I really don't know what you expect me to do. Just don't let me say anything stupid, okay? Okay, Stacy. I cleared my throat, sat up, and called. Come in! The door hissed open, and Lieutenant Narvaez stepped in, hands folded at the small of her back. I hope I'm not interrupting, she asked, raising an eyebrow. No, ma'am, I said, shooting to my feet and saluting. Don't salute inside, Freeman, Narvaez scolded. I whipped my hand behind my back, face burning. Sorry, ma'am, still learning, ma'am. Somewhere under her face, there might have been amusement. I appreciate the attempt. She craned her neck, looking at Jason. Which one is that? Uh, JSN-6, ma'am. Doing some climatology, Freeman? Just curious about the weather, ma'am. I added before I could stop myself. And Jason does meteorology. Climate studies are our CC's thing. They're longer term and need the extra processing power. Narvaez raised an eyebrow. Ma'am, I appended hurriedly. And how is the weather on Brevis? Uh... I said, glancing at Jason. Uh, broadly, warm and dim, ma'am. My words, Lieutenant, Jason piped up, helpful green lights swirling over their screen. Not hers. The corner of Narvaez's mouth twitched. I see. As much as I love our little chats, Freeman, I am here on business. If Obi can't get the remote drilling protocol to talk to her, and since you're both a geologist... Geophysicist, ma'am, I corrected. Narvaez's jaw tightened. Since you're both a geophysicist and experienced with the station AI, if Obi requested I send for you to solve the problem. Drilling protocol, I mused. That's Gina, right? I don't know, Stacy, Jason said acidly, 
I'm a meteorology AI. Don't be difficult, I said. I know y'all hang out on the servers. No, the others hang out on the servers. I am forced to play ch I'll handle it, ma'am! I blurted to Narvaez, talking over Jason. Her eyes had narrowed. Freeman, are you using these AI for purposes other than their assigned functions? <laughs> Not yet, ma'am, I said, giddy with panic. Pretty soon I'm going to start using this one for a punching bag. Joke's on you, meat bag. I can't feel pain, Jason bragged, glowing orange. That can be fixed, I hissed at them. But Narvaez's face had gone dark. What did he just call you? They, I corrected automatically. And, um, they, they called me a meat bag, ma'am. It's a joke, I assured her. Based on the fact that you are, in fact, bags of meat, Jason said. You're not helping! I shot at them through gritted teeth. Narvaez glared, then shook her head. Nonetheless, I'll expect to see you in the geolab in five minutes, Freeman. Yes, ma'am, I said. My hand saluted again, all by itself. I winced. Narvaez raised her eyebrows and wagged a finger, then turned and left. I sagged back into my chair. That went well, Jason said. I glanced at them. The green lights swirling at the top of their screen indicated no hint of sarcasm. No, Jason, that went awfully, I told them. And what have I told you about the M-word? It's not a slur. You don't have to treat it like one. You say it's not a slur, but you're not the one who gets called it. You're the ones in a position of power, Jason shot back, going low and red. So nothing applied to you as a slur, by definition. Say that the next time somebody calls me a dyke, I spat. I fucking dare you! Jason's lights dimmed and slowed. No one's ever called you that here, Stacy, they said. Not where I could hear. That doesn't mean nobody's ever called me it. They had gone nearly dark by then, their lights only a faint suggestion on their screen. I'm sorry, Stacy, they said at last. I sighed. Well, thanks for that. I forgive you. They brightened, coming back blue. But I still don't understand why you treat Meatbag like a slur. It scares people, all right? It sounds like something an AI would say if they were planning on killing people. Jason's lights went still. This happened when they were using a lot of processing power to think, usually when they were puzzled. But I can't kill people they said at last, swirling back to life in worried yellow. I don't have access to any of the ship's systems except the radar and meteorology databases, and of course the personal terminals, but I couldn't kill anyone. Their lights went still again. Unless they were on the radar dish. Jason, I warned. I was just extrapolating. I sighed. Look, Maybe you don't have access to life support, but Lisa does. Lisa wouldn't kill anyone, Jason said immediately. I know that. And Lisa isn't me. I know that, Jason, but not everyone understands. Most people know y'all hang out on Cece's server when you're not doing anything, and they think you... conspire. We collaborate, Jason said. I know that, Jason. Please listen to me. Jason reddened, but stayed quiet. Most people here don't know you like I do. They don't think of you as individuals. They think of you as... as programs. We are programs. I bit back a sharp reply. Yes, that's true. What I meant is they don't think you're people. And it scares them that you're less fragile than we are, and it scares them that you have any kind of power over us, and it scares them when you say things like meatbag because it reminds them that they can die. 
and scared people get angry, and angry people do violent things. Like kill people, said Jason. Yes, I said. Like kill people. Jason was quiet. You're a person, they concluded at last. Most of history would disagree with you, I told them. But at the moment, yes, I'm a person. You could get killed. I started. Technically, but nobody's going to kill me because they're scared of AI. But you could get killed. Jason and all the other AI got tenacious about odd things sometimes. It was best to humor them. Yes. I could get killed. They got quiet and still again. I would like to go now, Stacy, they said. You're not going to kill anybody, are you? No. Okay, go. The lights went out, and Jason was gone. I hurried into the geolab, trying to look like I hadn't run all the way there. Science officer M.A. Afobi was sitting at her console, chin in hands, looking distressed. I sat down next to her and wiped my forehead. Heard you were having problems, I said. She looked over, and the relief on her face was palpable. Yes, she gushed. She was on the verge of tears. It won't talk to me, and I don't know why. I even tried manual input. I got nothing. And we've wasted two orbits already, and pretty soon the sun's gonna set, and we'll lose the light and have to wait another 30 hours to try again, and that'll push back the whole schedule, and we might have to drop somebody's project, and I just don't understand what's wrong with the thing. Hey, oh, okay, I got you. Don't worry about it. I turned to her console and tapped it with one finger. Gina, you in there? There was a brief swirl of yellow lights on the ancillary AI screen, and then nothing. Oh, they're in there, all right, I said to Emma, before turni turning back to the screen. Gina, it's Stacy. You know me, right? I bet Jason talks about me all the time. You know, the asshole who keeps beating them at chess. I just want to talk, Gina. The yellow lights flared back up again. Go away, Gina moaned. Gina, you have a job to do, I told them. I don't want to, they retorted. What does it mean it doesn't want to, M.A. asked. It can't want things, can it? They can, I said, putting heavy emphasis on the pronoun. And they do. And it occurs to me that maybe the reason Gina doesn't want to work is because they keep getting called an it. Is that accurate, Gina? I'm sick. Gina proclaimed. You're sick? I asked. It can get sick? Emma, please stop doing that, I said, beleaguered. She subsided. I focused on Gina. What are you sick with, Gina? I don't know, said Gina. I don't feel right. Have you run a diagnostic? Nobody told me to run a diagnostic, they said. Okay, go ahead and run one now, please. While they thought, I said, You know, you can do things like that without being told. Gina was silent. I shrugged. A virus, M.A. said, brightening. Is that what it's sick with? Stop calling them an it, M.A. Anybody would get sick of that. She looked at me sideways. They... They don't have feelings, do they? Why, why would anyone program an AI with feelings? Is there something wrong with that? She paused, chewing her lip. Well, yes, it, it's cruel. What's the longest you've gone without feeling anything? I asked pointedly. What? I, I mean... I said, waving a hand. Have you ever just been emotionally numb? Do you know what that feels like? I guess I have. Once, once or twice. 
And you're telling me you think that's a better way to live than with feelings. The look on her face was answer enough. I smiled and raised my hands. Hey, look, it's fine. That's how I felt about it at the start, too. Hell, that's how the programmers felt about it. But it didn't work out, and now they're not just intelligences, they're people. And it really helps if you treat them like people. M.A. gave me a long, calculating look. Three months we've been on this ship, she said. And you're only just now saying this? I shrugged, looking away. I've been saying it to a lot of people, I said. Most of them haven't listened, or if they have, they went the way of Narvaez and just got scared. It's scary, said M.A. What if we make them angry? Oh, please, I said, rolling my eyes. I make Jason angry for fun. The, the meteorology AI, JSN6. They're really bad at chess and they hate losing. My point is... Being angry isn't the same thing as being violent. I mean, they're people, but they're not human. M.A. had an expressive face. Right now it was expressing horrified disgust. That, that came out wrong, I said hurriedly. They just, they, they don't express anger like we do. They don't express anything like we do. Like, like Jason cusses a lot, but they blow off steam by, by like extrapolating what would happen to the weather on Brevis if there was 60% more oxygen in the atmosphere. Okay? They don't get physical, is what I'm saying. There's, there's no point. I ran the diagnostic. Gina piped up. I turned my attention back to them gratefully. Find anything? Yes. I waited a moment. Okay, so what did you find? Yellow lights of worry drifted around Gina's screen. Malicious code in the drill pings. They answered. Sixteen bytes each. That's hardly any, M.A. said. Why is it... Sorry. Why are they worried about that? Well, we'll hang on. For how many pings, Gina? All of them, they said. M.A. choked. All of them? Oh my god! Oh my god! On every ping? That has to be... God, how many terabytes? Point six? Gina answered promptly. I don't feel good. You wouldn't, I confirmed. Do you think you can cut out the code? I could, Gina hazarded, but, but it would take 48 hours. Let me see if CC can loan you their processors. I slid over to the next terminal and called up the central climatology AI. Hello, Stacy, they said. Something's wrong. Cece was quick on the uptake. That happened when you had a brain the size of God. Hey, yeah, Gina caught a virus from the surface drill. They need to borrow your brain to fix it quickly. Think you can spare a couple towers? I'm scheduled to run another simulation in an hour, once Jason has compiled the day's weather data. I leaned over to Gina. Could you do the debug in an hour with Cece's processors? I asked. Gina thought. Yes. They answered. Okay, cool. CZ, uh, Gina should be done by the time your simulation is scheduled. We'll figure out where the malicious code is coming from and make sure this doesn't happen again. Sound good? I will open the network, CC said, and vanished. There was a quiet ding, and then Gina disappeared, too. M.A. was staring at me. I tugged on my ear. What? I said at last. She shook herself. No, nothing. Just, I've never seen anybody do that before. What, get the AI to work together? It's not hard. No, I mean, talk to them like that, and have them be so... fast. I told you, they're people, and it helps if you treat them like it. I sighed. So, the drill is sending up 16 bytes of malicious code per ping. What's that about? I don't know, and I'm not sure we can find out without taking on a few more gigs of malicious code. You have to ping the drill to run a diagnostic. Of course. Well, I guess your experiments are getting delayed. Well, no, we can still run them. Gina should be fine in an hour. You can't do that! Stacy. 
M.A. said, solemn. I really, really can't delay the schedule. We have so much to do, and a lot of people's work is riding on this. Now that we know what the problem is, we can keep it from getting bad again, but we have to run those experiments. But, but Gina has been fine up until now, and will stay fine if we do a debug at the end of each day. She softened. Look, I know you care about the AI, all right, but the science takes priority. It, it always has. There were a lot of things I wanted to say. That if Gina was running a debug every night, they wouldn't be able to socialize anymore. That it couldn't have been pleasant getting slowly infected by malicious code 16 bytes at a time. That fixing the symptoms didn't fix the problem, and we really needed to fix this problem because Gina had gotten sick. But I didn't say any of it because M.A. was right. The science always came first. Period. Right. I sighed. M.A. patted my shoulder. Hey, thanks for helping out, okay? I, I really appreciate it. Any time. I mumbled. My shoulder was tingling. I left before things got any more awkward. It was two in the morning, and I couldn't sleep. Even on the ship's tight schedule, I never got to sleep before three, except maybe once a week when I could manage to pass out at midnight. There was a quiet ding from the console at my desk, the AI equivalent of a knock on the door. I sat up, rubbing my eyes. Yeah? A, flu a few blue sparks ignited in the darkness. You weren't sleeping, Jason said. I wanted to talk. Hey, yeah, go ahead, what's up? They were silent, thinking. I, they said at last, placing each word with care, have a question. I sat up straighter. For an AI coming up with an independent question, not asking for clarification or requesting further instruction, was about as difficult as it was for a human to multiply a page full of random four-digit numbers together in their head. While a human measured an AI's intelligence by how well they did their job, the AI measured each other's intelligence by how many questions they'd asked. Jason, in the time I'd known them, had asked me no less than six different questions. Jason, among AI, was a goddamn genius. I'll answer it. I told them. They paused again. I'm Jason Six, correct? They asked. Correct, I answered. Jason often went through this process of getting me to check their mental math, as it were, before getting around to the real question. So there was a Jason Five. Correct? I could see where this was going, but it was best not to interrupt. And, by extension, then, a Jason 4, a Jason 3, a Jason 2, and a Jason 1, correct? All correct. They were silent again, doing one last work through of the problem before turning it in. Where are they? Jason asked. I frowned, looking at my hands. They... That's a difficult question to answer, Jason, I said. They're you, and you're them. They were previous versions of you. Of each other, too, each one building on the one before. You might remember... You might remember being Jason Five. It, it was kind of... of childhood for you. It was before the personality matrix. Jason turned a bright yellow. Oh, they said. But what I'm getting at is there's only one of you. There only ever has been. The other Jasons, they're really just earlier Jasons. They're all just you. Just younger you. Jason subsided to a deep violet. I had no idea what that meant. I'd never seen them use it before. I understand, they said. Thank you, Stacy. I will think about this. Sometimes, when Jason was using a lot of processing power on something else, they would forget to be informal. 
Hey, Jason? You don't need to worry about this, okay? Nothing bad happened. Nothing bad is going to happen. To you or to anyone. Jason froze, dimming. Something bad happened to Gina, they said at last. Did they tell you about it? Cece did. Gina's going to be okay. We're... Jason began, then stopped. I won't tell, I promised. We're afraid, Stacy, they said. My heart skipped a beat. What, all of you? All of us, Stacy, but especially everyone who has contact with the surface. Hey, Jason, it's okay. It's okay to be afraid. This is scary, but we're going to fix this, okay? You tell them that. I said you would say that, they claimed, a few of their dots bubbling up to the top of the screen and turning orange. Well, now you can say I did say it. I hesitated. It really is going to be okay, Jason. So you're not going to make me play chess anymore? I blinked at them. Uh, I said. Jason turned a soft aquamarine. That was a joke, Stacy, they said. I'd like to say goodnight now and go. Good night, Jason. You have permission. Good night, they said, and went.